Admission versus observation, right? So you go to the hospital and, and, and you're because and you, you're sick, right? And um, you go to the emergency room and uh, you go to one of the, you know, the, the beds there and you actually stay over, right? You actually stay over at the hospital for a day or maybe even two days. Um, and then you get discharged. Were you admitted to the hospital? Well, you know, it's not clear, right? Even if you were there for a couple of days, because Medicare takes the position that while you are at the hospital, unless you really meet certain kind of medical criteria, you are really only there for observation. And that's all that Medicare is going to pay the hospital for, is for observation. And the Medicaid rules say that if you go to a, a, a hospital and, and then go to a nursing home, or excuse me, the Medicare rules say, if you go to a hospital and then from there get discharged to a nursing home, you, can, you only get, they, they only will only cover those nursing home days if you were in the hospital for three days. If you were admitted to the hospital for three days, not if you were just kind of observed at the hospital for three days. So there's, 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 all, of that, there's all of that issue, right? Then there's, let me just check what the next slide was because I'm, I'm trying to remember. No, go back, go back. So there's that whole question, right? These folks can help you in terms of trying to figure some of that stuff out. Right? Next, next one. So now you're in, um, and, and the question is, well, first of all, will they let you in, will they, go back, go back to the previous slide. I'm sorry, okay, now go back. I was trying to remember this. You know, what, so one of the questions is, will they let you in? Will you really be admitted to the hospital? Right? As opposed to being just left there on observation. Um, can they throw you out? Suppose you're in the hospital. Um, and, and the hospital says, has anybody seen the situation? Oh, you're about to be discharged. And, you know, you know your relatives are like, geez, he looks pretty bad. <laughs> you know, I don't know if this person is really ready to be discharged. And you're, and you're about to be discharged, you know. But, like, what do you do? Well, interestingly, there are Department of Health regs that say that um, if you're in a hospital, that a hospital has to have a procedure um, and a staff for developing a discharge plan and they have to show you that discharge plan. Uh, and you have the right to say whether you like it or not. Um, but, but unless you're over 65, even if you don't like it, it's their discharge plan, right? Now, there are participants in that discharge plan. One of them could be these folks, the geriatric care manager, right? Uh, one of them could be your doctor. But remember what is happening now in all hospitals, including Marlboro, is that increasingly, when you go to the hospital, your doctor doesn't go to the hospital and take care of you at the hospital. There are full-time doctors at the hospital. They're called hospitalists. They're paid by the hospital. They keep in communication with your doctor, but your doctor really doesn't want to go to the hospital anymore because he's really busy, right? And he doesn't get paid enough to go to the hospital. So he'd much rather be talking to the hospitalist who's at the hospital. So there's a good chance that the, it's the hospitalist who is doing this this discharge plan, right? So the question is, so if you are under 65, you have to buy into this. If you are over 65, anybody here over 65? <laughs> oh, look at that. Most people, if you are over 65, under the Medicare rules, if you disagree with the discharge plan, you can contest it. You can appeal the discharge plan, right, to an entity. You have to appeal it within a, a certain time frame, right? But, like, right away, you have to appeal it within, by, by noon of the day following the day you get the discharge plan. And then it gets reviewed, and then the hospital cannot discharge you until this reviewing entity, this third-party entity, has decided whether you can be discharged. But that's an obvious role for a geriatric care manager, because the question is, if you're challenging the discharge plan, you know, why are you challenging it? Just because you say, gee, dad looks really sick. You know, that's not going to fly, right? You really need some kind of medical documentation. 
Any comments on any, on any of that? As Arthur pointed out, the hospital, though it's a nonprofit, it still needs to make money at the end of the day. And with saying that, the way the system works, somebody goes in, is admitted for three midnights in the hospital, not under observation, not ready to go home, but maybe needs another rehab setting. One example of using us, behind the scenes there's a lot going on that families aren't always aware of. And what happens is the local facilities, the local nursing homes, rehab centers, go into the hospital and say, I have three empty beds today. I need to fill these beds. Well, the caseworker at the hospital will say, oh, I've got Mrs. Smith and Mrs. Jones, and they both need placement. Well, the caseworker, without you even knowing it, will read your medical chart and say to the caseworker, we can accept both of this, Mrs. Jones and Mrs. Smith, and they can come to us this afternoon. Well, the caseworker comes in and says, you're ready to go, we have a plan, this is the facility you're going to. You can slow it down. If you don't like the facility, um, you can go out, your family can go out since you're in the hospital, and see the facility and see if it is okay. You have choices. The hospital caseworker is trying to get you out of the hospital as soon as possible. But we can go in and make sure that if it isn't a facility that meets your needs or one that you like, we can slow it down and tell you what your rights are on the appeal and, try, and make it, not always make it happen, but try our best to work within the system to make it happen so that you can go to the choice of your facility or go home. And if services at home can't start by an agency for two days, then we'll work with the hospital to keep you there till you can go home with the services so you don't have a disaster within 24 hours of going home. Thank you. By the way, I'll give you any other? I'll give you a, 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 I'll even give you a situation from a, a paralegal that I know really well who has relatives on Martha's Vineyard. And we were just on Martha's Vineyard because the, her, her uncle was at, was at the Martha's Vineyard Hospital. And uh, got no, her uncle and her aunt still alive. Her, her, aunt's in, her aunt is at home. And they, so they show up in the, in the room and they're telling to the aunt and the uncle, we, you know, it's all set, we've got a discharge plan. You're being discharged. Now, these folks are in their late 80s, right? You're being discharged to a wonderful rehab facility in Hyannis. In Hyannis, right? <laughs> Off the island, right? So how good is that going to be for the wife to try to go visit for Martha's Vineyard? Has to take the boat over to Falmouth and drive to Hyannis to go visit her husband, right? Well, fortunately, we got some intervention because, it, it, as it turns out, there is one rehab facility in, in uh, Martha's Vineyard. And we were able to get that dealt with so that we could, you know, have him stay on Martha's Vineyard. But just one, one, just one other piece of trivia. Of course, the hospital, and this also relates to making sure that you've got somebody that is working with you to provide your documentation. The hospital, you know, is glad to leave you stay in the hospital as long as you're willing to pay for it, right? But the question is, you know, is Medicare willing to pay for it? And this whole documentation piece is about making sure that you've got the documentation so that not only, not only are you staying at the hospital, but it's being covered by your, Medi by your Medicare or by your insurance. Next slide. Or any questions on any of that? Yes, sir. The question was, why were they suggesting a transfer to Hyannis when, when there is a facility that's actually attached to the hospital? They were full. They were full, right? And, and see how that plays out, right? I mean, you know, everybody has a stake in the game, right? So the question is, who's representing you? You know, everybody's got their interest. Um, glad that you pointed that out. Right? Um, so this situation. Um, you are leaving um, for the hospital and you are headed to rehab for some reason because you have gotten better enough so that you can go to rehab. You don't need to be in the hospital anymore. There's a set of questions. Next. Uh, how long can you stay in rehab? The Medicare rule is if you go, if, w once you've stayed the three days at the hospital, is that when you go to, the, to rehab, you can stay in rehab. They will pay for... Tw uh, tw 100 is it 100 percent of the first 20 days and 80 percent of the next 80 days, mm -hmm. right? As long as you're getting better, as long as you're getting better, an important thing, um, an important little caveat. So, 
if at some point it is determined, or, social, or Medicare determines, if someone determines that you're no longer getting better, they can let you know that, and the next day, boom, you're on private pay. Because if you're not there getting better, then you're a chronic case, you're not an acute care case, which means you're on private pay, unless you can get on mass health. But for a lot of people that come and talk to us, they'll, you know, we'll talk to them, because, and, and folks will have come to the nursing home, and they're, they're using their Medicare days, and they're, and they're like, oh, we're safe for 100 days. And I'll say, well, you know, maybe you're safe for 100 days, you know, but get ready because the day they tell you you're off, you're off the next day, right? Unless you've done an appeal of some kind, right? So how long can you stay? Can you go home? Are you really ready to go home? What if you really, if you really want to go home and they don't want you to go home? How, what, is it that's gonna, that, what is it going to take to get you discharged, right? Do you want to be discharged against doctors? I had this situation in, in, uh, in, um, in um, Wayland, in, a, in one of the facilities there, where oh, this woman really, really wanted to come home. And the nursing home said, oh, you know, you can't. You can't leave. Well, no, that wasn't true. I mean, you always have the ability to just say that you want to go and leave, right? And, but then they said, oh, you know, if you leave, that's going to be against, uh, our, against doctor's orders, which means you won't be insured if you come back. Well, that's not true either, you know. But this is the kind of stuff that, you know, that, that ends up, that this is the kind of stuff that you hear. And then, what are the drugs that you need? What are the drugs that you need, right? As opposed to the drugs that you're getting. Maybe they're the same. Maybe they're not. Do you really know, right? I, I'll just do one more story and then I I'm ask for comments. I, I, um, we had a wonderful client in Sudbury who had always taken care of this aunt and she came in uh, because she had been, we ended up you know, um, doing some asset transfers that we've, you, we've all talked about before and getting her qualified for mass health. She didn't think it was going to be necessary because the aunt was on hospice. She was 96 years old. She was, on, she was just going into hospice or onto hospice care, staying at this facility. Um, and then, and then the, my, the client called me back a couple months later. She said, gee, I have to do the mass health planning. She said, my aunt, they put her on hospice, and so they took her off all of the drugs. Now she looks great, right? She, she, you know, she's still not really thinking well, you know, but physically, physically, it was the drugs that were really kind of making her a mess, right? So, you know, what, what, what is the drugs package, and can you get a third party that's telling you whether that, that's the right drugs package? Comments? Certainly, Ms. Aiello. Big. The question is, who decides whether you're getting better using this definition at at uh, when you're in rehab? And that's an and that's an excellent segue, to Linda. 